Hi, Cher Russell here, editor of The Daily Reckoning Australia, and today, let's talk Afterpay. Or not so much the company, but more the uh, buy now, pay later business model that has really taken uh, Australia by storm over the last couple of years. Uh, now, I'm not here to trash uh, either, comp- either of the companies like Afterpay or ZipPay. I think they're brilliant uh, business models, and I can't believe anybody didn't think of them sooner. Uh, however, one of the things that I have been quite critical of is that we don't know how much services, uh, these buy now, pay later services, boost consumer spending. Now, the reason for this is these companies actually operate outside uh, credit standards in Australia, basically. So even though uh, buy now, pay later uh, companies offer uh, offer short-term loans, essentially, it's not traditional forms of credit. So they've never had to report um, how how much lending they're actually doing. So we didn't, uh, until now, really get to know how much this is supporting consumer spending. Uh, However, because these businesses are getting bigger and there is sort of this mass penetration in the retail market of Australia, we're starting to get a really good idea uh, in just how much of a role they are playing in consumers spending more money than they would have normally. And a report came out in The Age uh, just today, and I'll be quite honest, it's a bigger industry than I realised. Now, it turns out there's about 1.9 million buy now, pay later transactions happening in Australia this year. And that uh, as of June this year, Australians currently owed $900 million. Now, that's nearly a billion dollars owing through Afterpay services, which is just a a phenomenal amount. And given that number was recorded in June this year, I highly suspect that um, after the Christmas period this year, it is highly likely that it will have pushed over to $1 billion. Now, given that the uses of credit cards has uh, definitely slowed, so the uptake of new credit cards and the use of credit card trend transactions has slowed over the past couple of years, we can definitely say that these afterpay and zip pay businesses are having an impact on consumer spending. The good news is people are less rela- uh, reliant on credit. The downside is, is that when you start to look at the customer base, the people who are using these afterpay services are generally the low income earners who are earning less than $40,000 a year. So what this tells us is that afterpay services are most definitely propping up consumer spending. However, consumer spending growth in Australia isn't particularly strong, uh, especially in discretionary spending. It sits well under that uh, 0.5% level that economists like to look for to suggest consumer spending is in the healthy range. So if consumer spending is sitting around the 0.3.4 mark, what we know is that it's not as strong as it could be, and that's even when people are taking up credit-like services to boost their spending capacity with the economy. The flow-on effect is it does reduce Australia's overall national income, uh, gross domestic product. So I think over the next couple of years, what we are going to see is the impact of afterpay services uh, less and less on consumer spending. And I wouldn't be surprised if that actually feeds through and lowers our gross domestic uh, product uh, sometime next year. That's all from me today. I'll be back next week with more.